Welcome to the New Times Weekly Review, where we present to you the top five stories that made headlines throughout the week. And stay tuned for an interview at the end of the review. I am Ines Ruteise Umregwa with my colleague Iriza Jade Natasha. Mazi high risk residents to move into upgraded homes. The city of Kigali will in September open the gates to families that have been at high risk due to their proximity to the Mazi drainage system. They will be placed in a 28-unit housing block located in Nyerujenje district. The block is part of a train of others that are being developed in the area to provide safer homes for the people who live along with the drainage system. Residents and business owners along with this drainage all the way down to Nyabugogo area have in the past called on to the city authorities to come to their rescue, especially during the rainy season when waste and rainwater from homes in the sectors of Nyamirambo, Jitega and Chimisagara overflows, putting their lives and property at risk. Youth tipped on green innovations. Youth in the country have been called upon to join the efforts to innovate and create jobs in the green sector while at the same time solving environmental issues that are affecting the country. During the Youth Green Knowledge Exchange and Exhibition event held in Kigali, Juliet Cavera, the Director General of Rwanda Environment Management Authority, REMA, assured the youth that the green sector offers countless opportunities and it is up to the youth to seize them. Varsha Redkal Palepu, UNDP Deputy Resident Representative, Program and Operations in Rwanda, backed the young entrepreneurs' testimonies that were shared at the event, saying that they are ready to offer more financial support to youth innovative projects that are supporting the country in its environmental sustainability programs, and urged the youth to be more job creators than job seekers in the sector. Body of Rwandan National Recovered by Canadian Police The body of Steve Musi, a Rwandan man who drowned in a lake last weekend, was recovered by Canadian Police on Tuesday, August 23rd. The body was recovered in Lake Ontario where the 24-year-old is believed to have drowned while celebrating a birthday on a boat. According to family sources, after the Canadian police discovered the body, it was transported to a Canadian Coast Guard station in St. Catherine's from where he was positively identified by his family. The body has since been transferred to the Center of Forensic Sciences in Toronto for a post-mortem and positive identification. According to witness accounts, Musi jumped into the water for a swim in the lake while celebrating a friend's birthday on a rented boat. He was with other friends. May he rest in peace. Mutsinzi looking forward to a new chapter in Portugal. Rwanda international Ange Mutsinzi has said he is ready for the new chapter of his football career after completing a move to Portuguese second division side club the Sportivo Trophins. The 24-year-old Alia this week signed a two-year deal of 150 million Rwandan francs after four weeks of trials with the club. Speaking to Weekend Sport in a telephone interview, Mutsinzi, who won the Rwanda Premier League twice in a row and beaten with local giants APR, say that he was excited to realizing his dream as a professional player. He also affirms that he will keep on working hard to level even upper. Bruce Melody's 1 billion Rwandan francs deal spurs debate. When Food Bundles, a local online fresh food distribution company, announced a partnership deal with musician Puss Melody worth 1 billion Rwandan francs on Wednesday, August 25th, every member of the press at the presser was taken aback. The artist was said to be paid the money within two years during which the partnership will last. Journalists, however, seemingly found it hard to believe how a Rwandan musician could reach an agreement worth such a huge amount of money more so with a company that started operations in Rwanda six months ago. Food Bando's founder, Dioscore Shikama, said that the deal is real and worth it because the money that will be paid to Bruce Melody within the agreed time is part of the company's investment raised from the investors. However, word going around is that the same local business companies and celebrities hype the deals they sign just to draw attention from both the media and the public at large. Joanne Bawazi has more on this. Thank you, Jed and Inez. Welcome to the second segment of the weekly review where we'll bring you the exclusives. 
of the week. I am Joanne Bawazi. So, today in our studios, we have a guest. I bet you can guess. So welcome with me, DJ Adams. It's nice having you, Adams. Thanks a lot, The New Times. Thanks a lot, John. So let's dive into the gist. So recently, Bruce Meld signed a deal, a $1 billion deal, that spiked reactions from the public from a new uh, food company. So people are wondering, could it be true? Of course, the boss of this company came out to say that it's true. So do you think a company that has just started, like for the last six months, can really afford that much and do you think this is real does it seem real to you well according to me if uh, first thing you said people don't believe that it's true it could be true in one way or another but again if we are to judge according to a startup company then that one is also not going to be the right way to do it because we don't know what they have, we don't know their budget, we don't know how they are planning to do their business. And of course, the first thing we should look at is that we don't know how much money they have. That's one. Now, the reason why we are talking specifically about this big deal is because it is the only deal that has been in Rwanda that is worth a lot of money to such an extent and to one billion. That's a lot of money. But before we get to that, who is Bruce Melody? Why should he be the one to get all that? You see? What has he done to be the one to be chosen to be a brand ambassador who can get that amount? We will start from other deals that made me, him get all that uh, fame or something like that. And to me, just like you said that the public does not believe that it's true. I am among the public. Well, I heard what people said, and I tried to judge it on my own way. I don't believe that that is real. However much even the companies will still uh, prove that it's true, but it's still not true. To me, I still don't believe it. Maybe it's unbelievable, just like anyone else would not believe it. But now, let's look. We have seen Bruce Melody owning a TV and that is one of the TVs here in Rwanda. At the end of the day, we found out that he doesn't even have one share in the TV station. That's one. We have heard Bruce Melody talking about being the brand ambassador of uh, Kigali Arena, which means that in every big event, he's supposed to be there. He has not yet even performed a single song. He was supposed to be there in the opening of the ceremonies, opening of the basketball thing but he has not been there. Now we are talking about a big uh, uh, company which not everyone knows about. It's a small company. So when you talk about one billion, that is a thing that was hyped up all along because they said that he's going to be one of the richest guys who is who, uh, doing music in East Africa. When you talk about that, then that is also yet another lie because there's in no way Bruce Melody can be bigger than Chameleon. He cannot be bigger than Jaguar. He cannot be bigger than uh, Diamond. He cannot be bigger than Alikiba. He cannot be bigger than... Even than, than Masamba, he cannot. Yes, that's my take. What if this is one of the deals that is going to make him like famous and go like far beyond Rwanda? Why are you so insisting that he maybe cannot? because it's not yet there. Okay, apart from that, uh, do you think some musicians here in Rwanda deserve that more than him? Well, according to me, uh, getting that money is not what is going to make him go out of Rwanda or take his music out, a career out of Rwanda because in the real sense, he's supposed to be promoting the company in Rwanda and not, be, uh, not outside Rwanda, you see. If they were to be wanting someone who can take, them to take their products out of Rwanda, then they'll be looking for more international artists. And when talk about international artists, Bruce Melody is not among them. Because Bruce Melody is yet to make a name like Medi or like The Ben. So you see, if they were to look for a person who is going to be taking their products in Rwanda and outside Rwanda, but the products coming from Rwanda, 
then that person is not supposed to be Bruce Melody. As we wind up, uh, we believe that one billion is really much, but we also think uh, there's a possibility of this deal being true. Yeah. Uh, in scenarios whereby uh, some artists have come up, I might not like really mention name by name, but in such scenarios where uh, artists have come out to sign big deals, uh, could it be a way of really trying to gain popularity in the music scene? When you talk about gaining popularity in, uh, through such ways, I'll still give you one of the people who are very controversial when it comes to uh, creating uh, scandals, things like that. Even Ali Kiba sang about him, says you are just there to make scandals, but you're not good when it comes to doing music. One of the biggest people when it comes to scandals is Diamond. Diamond will always be talked about, about women, about uh, some affairs, more affairs and things like that. That is only controversy. Now when he adds to his music, that, that makes it marketing. Now when you go to Bruce Melody, for him, it's just controversy for no reason. It's just a competition for no reason, just competing for no good reason, like serious. So, that is not any controversy because at the end of the day, you can never lie to people all the time. You can only lie once, you cannot lie all the time. I gave you examples. Isiwo TV is not his, but everyone thought that it is his. That is not the only deal. We will look at uh, Kigali Arena. Let's forget about Kigali Arena. He said that he's going to be doing music in Tanzania, but he's still dealing with the mediocre pre uh, producers in Rwanda. All those are lies just to make heads turn to his direction, but he has not done anything. So, uh, I think personally, I'm happy for him, but he should be sorry for telling lies. So, like, as a DJ uh, that has been in the music industry for quite long, not only in Rwanda, but in Kenya as well, so uh, when can the public, because many times things happen, and the public like does not know remember the public is the number one support you get so many times um, the, uh, the different things that happen but proof doesn't come out so when can the public know that uh, this deal is so impossible and this is real now this is rwanda we know our media we know how poor our media is we know how poor our media guys are and we know how much you can become very good mouthpieces for such things. We can only be very good at telling lies, but when things turn out, uh, turn uh, around, we are not there again to defend them. So, what if Bruce Melody paid me like 10,000 or 20,000 francs for me to go and talk about him having that deal? Remember, it is me who is in the middle. I'm talking about DJ Adams, about any other presenter, about any other journalist who is the one who is supposed to be having the real information or the real truth. Now, you're already biased into believing that what you are being told is true because you have the money or you got paid for it, those small bribes, you see. Now, with that, the public will still believe that what you're talking about is true because they believe that what the journalists talk about is supposed to be the truth. Now, those guys also know that that is the easiest way to bias people. What they need is not you, they need the masses out there. You talk to the masses. They know how to get to you and once you become the mouthpiece, then that is it. They'll still keep the lies, but one day, one time, things will still turn around and it will not be looking good in front of the guys, yes. Thank you so much, DJ Adams. Thank you so much, John. You've heard it from him. The views expressed in this interview are for DJ Adams. Thank you. Until next time, bye-bye. Thank you for watching. For such stories and more, subscribe to our YouTube channel, The New Times Rwanda, and follow us on our social media platforms. I am Elisa Jade Natasha. I am Ines Rutesire Umlerwa. Have a nice week ahead. Mm -hmm.